Good morning. Morning, you guys. It's Friday. We made it. We on top of the grass instead of underneath it. We woke up in the land of the living. What a wonderful place to be. What a wonderful time to be alive. Oh, I hope you guys are having had a good week, a blessed week. Sorry, y'all. My ankle bracelet keep getting caught in my shoe. Um, I'm excited, y'all. It's Friday. I'm always excited on Friday. Like it's end of the week, and I love it. Like it's over, and this week flew by. Like I can tell with this new job that every day is going to just fly by. There's always something new. Um, every time I come to work, I'm, it's something different. So that's what's so exciting about this job. It's always going to be something new. Um, and that works for me. Um, good morning, Walter. Um, so you know what? So last night I went to um, a poetry reading last night. Um, and I've, that's been my thing on Thursdays because, you know, I'm really into that. Um, that type of scene where, you know, people just come together and just get to express themselves through words and, you know, they, they pour their, their heart out into these things. You get to really see people um, in their poetry. Um, you too, uh, Walter, have a fabulous Friday. Um, and one of the things, one of the, um, uh, the po one of the poets, uh, he read a poem about, you know, God. Um, and he, I'm going to have him on the show on Saturday. So you guys tune in on Saturday because he'll be on the show. Um, but one of his poems that he talked about was talking about, um, how God didn't like him or love him or whatever. Um, and then it really struck a chord with me because, you know, you guys has been on, you've seen, um, what we were experiencing with, um, James that kept coming on, um, the lives and trying to dispute, um, the, uh, who Jesus is and, um, how, you know, black people shouldn't believe in Jesus and that he's, he hasn't done anything for us type thing. Um, and literally when this guy was doing this poem, I was like in tears um, because I was like, God, it's just so sad that people really don't know you. They really don't know. They really don't have a relationship with you because if they did, there's no way that they will say the things that they say about you. There's no way that they will feel the way that they feel about you. Um, and it's like the things that they're repeating is stuff that um, the enemy has deceived us into believing. Um, the first thing that the enemy does when he goes to kill, steal, and destroy is to create division. That's how he conquers, is he creates division. And this last president that we had created so much division where now we are even questioning the love of God. Um, and we are questioning uh, what was taught to us. Like, I get that, you know, the enemy did use the Bible to um, keep slaves in order to, but we were missing the bigger picture. Um, that was a deception. That was a lie that they taught us. But God is so real. And his love is so unconditional and so real. You know, after this guy did this poem, I just went up to him and I just hugged him so tight, so tight. And I wanted him to feel the love that God commands me to have for him. You know, this he's a gay young man and... I wanted him to understand that no matter what choices he's made in life, no matter what he has done, I'm no better than him. You know, we all know better than each other. We all are God's children and he loves us all the same. There's no difference. Whatever choice you make, God still loves you. And I'm, a, I'm about to get ready to cry now because it really broke my heart to be able to hear us not even have a real relationship with God and to go and speak these things about the father, you know, that's just like, 
you know why it hurt me? Because it's just like if somebody will come to you and talk about your mother. You know what I mean? Or somebody will come to you and talk about your brother or talk about, you know, a family member of yours and talk about and drag their name through the dirt in your face. You know, this is the love that I have for God. And it crushes me because I know that if you had the relationship that I have with God, there's no way that you would say these things. And everything starts in the mind, goes to the heart and then comes into, into frustration. Oh, my God, Walter, that is so true. That is so true. It's, and that's where the enemy starts. He starts in your mind. If he can change your perception, if he can ch change the way you see things, then he already has you. And because we're now in this generation that claim to be so woke, they have changed their minds about who God is. Um, they're starting to say, I don't believe that anymore. Although he has worked in their lives since the beginning he's the same god yesterday today and forever he's always done the same thing and even even though you've turned your back on him you're still able to voice that you're still able to come on here on my lives and say what it is that you want to say about him you're still able to do that so god is still showing you mercy because the wages of sin is death and blasphemy against jesus is death so that's the sin so God is still granting you mercy. He still gave you an opportunity to get, try to get it right, to try to change your perception and try not to allow the enemy to take hold of your mind. Um, it's just, oh my God, it's, it blows my mind. It, it really does. It blows my mind because I guess because I have a relationship with him. That was the first thing I had with him. I didn't grow up in a church. You know, I went here and there, but I wasn't like, you know, a church kid or I didn't go um, everywhere. I mean, I didn't go every Sunday or every Wednesday. I didn't do those things. You know, I just knew that there was a God and I constantly would talk to him because I knew that the situation that I was in was not permanent. I knew that God was going to bring me out of that situation and that it was he was the only person that can help me that I don't know how I knew that but I just knew that even though I wasn't taught that so with that being said I've always had a relationship with him I've always talked to God I've always would plead with him Lord please help us help us because I grew up in a very abusive home um and I always would plead Lord help us get us out this situation so I never really I'm not I can't, like I said, when I first started these lives, I don't really know the Bible like that. Like, I, I'm not going to be able to just throw scriptures at you. I know some of it just because as I got older, I started to um, go to church on my own and start to learn some of the scriptures. I would listen to T.D. Jakes like all the time. Um, and he taught me a lot. I love the way he really broke it down. Um, now the pastor that I have, which is, you know, younger, he, he breaks it down even more to our generation so we can better understand it. So, and I love that he give us history and content on whatever it is he's talking about. So you, you get a picture of what's going on at that time. So you really get to understand it. Um, but I, like I said, I wasn't a Bible taught person. I just had a relationship with God. And that to me is what's lacking in so many people, even in the churches, um, even in the people that are being able to say there's no Jesus or, you know, Jesus the white man has lied to you about who he was and who, where he came from. Yes, there were some lies, but you can't lie to me about my father. You can't lie to me about my mother or my brother or my sister. You can't lie to me because I have a relationship with them. And that is what's so important. That is what God has really been talking to me about when he instructed me to do these lies. Like, okay, I know you don't know this Bible. I know you don't know the word, but you know me. That's all he kept saying, but you know me. And like I didn't even want to let this, this guy last night, like, like I said, he was a gay young man, and I didn't even want to let him go. I was holding him so tight. Like, I love you. God loves you. Don't don't ever feel like you've done something that God has turned his back on. There's nothing you can do to separate you from the love of God there's nothing you can do just like you know a mother and a child just like you know the guy that was just convicted um of killing you know the guy on uh, George that was the police officer that was convicted of that his mother got up there it's clear a day clear as day that you can see that this is what he did but she got up there and was like not my baby 
not my baby. You know, that's the love of a parent. And God is not going to turn his back on you. He's never, no matter what lie the enemy tries to feed you, no matter what story they try to tell you, please believe this. This is so important. Please believe this, that God loves you. And he is not going to turn his back on you, no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter what this world has tricked you into believing. I'm sorry, y'all. I mean, it's just, it, it broke my heart. Um, Walter said that's why it's so important. What, I'm sorry, what we put in our spirit, I get, yes, yes. Um, but God will renew in us a right mind and a right spirit. Absolutely, Walter. He, and, and that's what he tells us. That's the one thing about when you come to God. God renews you. He restores you to who you was when he first spoke you into existence. He restores you back to that person before life happened to you, before the world took hold of you and fed you all of these lies. He gets to reprogram and pe people think that the minute you come into this walk that it's a change right away. It is not. It took years years of things happening to you for you to become the person you are today so it's going to take years years of god working the things out of you and replacing it with his love his goodness the think the good things he says about you it is not going to happen overnight it takes time you know one of the things um me and my uh my boyfriend was working on so i told you guys guys god had spoke to me and told me to stop doing certain things um um he told me to stop smoking weed he told me to stop having sex before i'm married he told me to stop these things and you know what was hard about that is because what was hard is one you know to me weed was my way to escape um the things that i didn't have you know it was like okay let me get high to not even worry about the things I didn't have um, and that was my escape and then God started to give me everything that I was asking for so it was really no need for the weed so it was easy for me to say okay I don't need that anymore I have everything that I want I'm, I'm content and happy with everything the way it is now is my life perfect no I got a lot of things other things going on but um, I had to learn to appreciate what God has already given me and then the not having sex is very hard because me and him and I live together. You know, we have a child together. Um, and it's very frustrating and very hard for me to be obedient in this in this type of position. But you have to be. You have to be obedient because God has opened so many doors for me. He has made sure that it, as long as I'm obedient, he continues to provide. He continue, And that is the love of a father. He, he continues to make sure that every thing that I asked for, that every desire of my heart, he's working it out to give it to me. Um, but I had to be obedient. Um, I have been in church all of my life and still have had major struggles in my life. And people think that because you're in church, the, the struggle stops. No, no. The enemy is going to attack you even more because you are now a believer. You are a follower of the good news. You are spreading it. So the enemy is going to attack you. He doesn't want that out. He doesn't want you to let that out. He doesn't want you to be a follower of God. He's jealous. Do you understand that? This is why the enemy is trying to attack you. He's jealous of the love that the father has for us. He once had that love and he, he feel like he lost it. He feel like it's over, but God still loves him too. In all his mess that he's done and everything, he, God can simply just destroy him. He could simply, he's God. He could simply just say, okay, no more bad, whatever. That's it. But because of his love for him, he's giving him, okay, I'm going to let you, if anybody wants to follow you, let them follow you. But those who wants to follow me, let them follow me. Because God wanted to give us free will. That's how much he loves us. I don't want to force you. I don't want to force you to love me. I don't want to force you to do what it is that I want you to do. I don't want to force you to believe in me. I want you to love me on your own accord. And that's how we are with anybody. You don't want to force nobody to be around you or to be your friend or to love you back. You don't want to force them. You want it genuinely. And, and that's the God that we serve. I am just... 
I'm sorry, y'all. It's just, it really broke my heart. It really breaks my heart when I hear or see things like that because I know the relationship is important. I know that the relationship is important. It's not about you knowing the word. It's not about you following the traditions of the church. It's not about you listening to what this pastor said or that pastor said. It's not about um, you uh, hearing what other people have told you about who God is. It's not about any of that. It is about the relationship, the personal relationship that you have with God. Are you creating a personal relationship with him? Do you know who he is? Do you know what he says about you? Do you know and have you ever felt the love that he has for you? His love is so unconditional. I'm telling you something right now. If there is a void that you are looking to fill. I'm not lying to you when I say this. I'm not trying to just tell you something I don't know about. There has been voids in my life. I, I never knew my dad. Never had, never. If I seen him walking up today, I wouldn't know who he was. Never knew him. That's a void. My mom was so abused that she wasn't a mother to me. She was in her own mess. So I really kind of raised myself. That was a void. Then I got into this world, really had, you know, no friends really was to myself real rules I was always real withdrawn that's why it's odd to see me doing this because I really was to myself that was a void because I had no other connections but when God but when I really start establishing this relationship with God really started just stop asking God for things and allowing him to come to me and talk to me and me listening to him too that is when those voids start to diminish I no longer felt like something was missing I no longer felt like I had to do something in order to achieve this like I had to be in a relationship or I had to have a boyfriend or I had to have friends or I had to have my mother around or I had to get to know my dad or I had to find him I no longer felt that need God is my everything. This is a love that I've been searching for my entire life. For him to instruct me and direct me in which path I need to go. And to do it in love. I, I, I love him. I, I just, I, I, and I want you guys to have the same love. I want you guys to understand that don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy feed you anything and you believe it. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And we, we really think that those three things mean it's going to be something that we can see. Like he's going to physically kill us. He's going to physically steal stuff from us. But that's, that's it's more deeper than that. It's way deeper than that. Kill, steal, and destroy means to... He's going to um, create division among us. You're going to be able to do it yourself. The enemy doesn't even have to do anything. He doesn't have to do anything. All he has to do is create division. And you'll start attacking each other. It's one thing I teach my kids all the time. You never let anybody know that there's strife between you two. If you have a disagreement with your brother or your sister, you don't do it outside. You take it in the house. As far as everybody outside this house knows... You two are the best of friends. But when you guys have, because you're going to have disagreements, you take it amongst you, each other. You you go in a private place and you discuss it. You conversate about it. You don't let anyone else know that there's division. Because once they know that there's division, that's their plan of attack. That's their way in. That's exactly how the enemy was able to get Eve. He waited till she was by herself. And he started to create in her mind a division between her and God. He didn't do it when they were together, when Adam and Eve was together. He wouldn't have been able to do it then. He waited till she was by herself, till there was a moment for him to be able to create some division, some, some doubt in her mind about who God was. 
and this is what this last president has done. He's created so much division in this in the United States right now. Where that division has trickled down to every area in our lives. We have started to doubt God. We've started to doubt what we've been taught. We've started to doubt even the things that we see with our own eyes. We're starting to doubt. And the one thing you can't tell me is that there's no God. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, um, Roberts. That's one thing you cannot tell me. That there's no God. I've seen him do way too much. Seen him do way too much. Walter, you are absolutely right. God will put first, last, and the last first. And everybody is going to see it. And that's exactly what's happening. So I don't want to lose any of my brothers and sisters. In, um, and, I, and when I say brothers and sisters, I'm not just talking about black people. I'm talking about races of all color because I don't see color. I see us as human. We are connected. We all bleed the same color. We all have the same issues going on. We all deal with fears um love loss heartbreak we all deal with those things so i don't want to see any of my brothers and sisters be deceived by this enemy because he is tricking us he's tricking us into believing that everything that we've told is a lie that we've been told everything that we've been told is a lie did they lie to us about some things yes they did but what do you know in your heart? What has worked for you? And that's why when the guy James was on here, I didn't knock him. I didn't put him down for what he believes. If that works for you, then by all means, that's what you do. I'm not going to knock your belief. It's not for me to. Only thing is for me to do is just to love on you and tell you that I love you. And this is what I believe. That's it. And you can't argue a lie. But this guy wanted to continue to keep attacking me. He even went into my inbox and continued to keep attacking me and telling me, you know, that I was an embarrassment, you know, to to be preaching to you guys about Jesus. And understand that when you take this walk, you're going to be crucified. People are not going to like you. They're going to try to force you not to believe that. They crucified Jesus. Why do you think they're not going to crucify you? So is this walk easy? No, but the reward is so worth it. The reward is so worth it. The love of the father is so worth it. So I'll go ahead and pray with you guys. Um, I just wanted to get that out because like I said, I was so heartbroken last night. It just, it really broke my heart. I really went to God and I really was just crying like, Lord, why? Why do they not understand the love that you have for us? Why do they not understand that there's nothing they can do can separate us from your love? And if that's the void that you're looking to fill, he has it. That relationship is there with him. He's open. His arms are open, welcoming you no matter where you are, no matter who you are. So um, our father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for just hearing our prayers. Lord, first forgive us of our sins and then cast those sins into the lake of forgetfulness. Lord, never again bring it into your attention or mine, Father God. Lord, we thank you this morning just for giving us an opportunity to be surrounded by your love, for giving us the opportunity to have a chance to have a relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for never turning your back on us, for being the God that is the true living God that loves us beyond measure. We thank you for that agape love. Father, I love you. I love you, and I thank you for loving me back. Father, I ask that you touch every person that is hearing the sound of my voice, Father God, that you fill every void, that you remove any enemy's lies out of their mind right now, God. That you touch them, Lord God, and you surround them with your love. You put your arms around them and let them know that you love them right where they are. Father, rebuke any plan of the enemy right now in their life, Lord God. 
remove any obstacle out of their way that will keep them from doing what you set them out to be call forth their gifts lord god call forth their purpose father god call them to be the men of god that you ordain them to be call them to be the women of god that you ordain them to be father we trust you we trust what you say about us father you called us to be the head and not the tail above and not beneath blessed going in and blessed going out father we thank you for you being the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last Father, remove any um, ill words that have been spoken against us. Anything that has been spoken into our life that goes against you, rebuke it and remove it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak healing of our minds. I speak renewing of our minds right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your hedge of protection around us, Lord. As we go out into this world and the enemy continues to attack, he never takes a break and nor do you. Father, we thank you for fighting battles seen and unseen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I ask these prayers and blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So... You guys have a wonderful and blessed day. <laughs> I love y'all. I love you. I truly love you. There's nothing that you could do about that. So accept it and move on. God loves you more. And you guys have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Be safe. Please be safe out here. Continue to stay prayed up. I pray for you. So please pray for me. Um, and if God willing, I'll talk to you guys on Monday. Again, tune in on um saturday on my podcast on the scene podcast like and share like and share my live somebody needs to hear this like and share it like and share it. somebody needs to hear this word today somebody needs to know that they are loved right where they are so like and share this one um saturday make sure y'all tune in i'm gonna have the young man that i talked about he's he's a his words are so powerful you're going to i'm telling you if you miss it you're going to miss out because i love his poetry it, it really speaks to you um so tune in on saturday 12 30 central standard time on the scene podcast with jerry gerald and tara lee um and again i'll talk to you guys on monday have a great weekend